and everybody but Shari should be muted. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome, ladies. Welcome. Welcome, everybody, to Community Conversations produced by Midwest Women's Herbal. As we wait for a few more people to join us, go ahead and find that chat and type in where you are. I know there's been some folks experiencing some um, severe weather, so just go ahead and um, you know, type in your weather or your favorite plant. You can play around with those reaction buttons, raising hands, clapping, giving hearts. Um, and let's see what we've got going on there. All right. Very windy. Let me take a look here in the chat. Savannah, Georgia, East Troy, West Michigan, gentle rains. Let's see, starting the thunderstorm, storm brewing. So yeah, looks like it's all throughout that Midwest there. Hello from Kenosha, Colorado, Rockford's raining. I'm in uh, Geneva, Illinois, west of Chicago. It was drizzling. It's a little bit dark outside, but not too bad there. So, all right. Well, welcome everybody, welcome. We're delighted that you're with us tonight. In case you aren't familiar with us, Midwest Women's Herbal is a woman-led and woman-empowered organization that has been producing herbal and personal growth events in person and virtually for over 13 years. We produce two conferences and other in-person events, one live virtual series annually, as well as ongoing virtual courses. Community conversations like this event too. And we have on-demand workshop recordings. To find out more, please visit our website, midwestwomensherbal.com or herbwomenclassroom.com. And those will be put into the chat by our tech team. So welcome to Expressions of Community Village Herbalism with Linda Conroy and Barbara Batondo. I'm Sherry Rallish. I'll be your hostess this evening. I started attending the Midwest Women's Herbal Conference 10 years ago, and um, I've... Um, um, I became a vendor and a sponsor. Um, I also apprenticed with Linda Conroy, and now I've joined the organizing team, and I'm really excited to be here. With us tonight is also Ashley Oman and Alicia Gassaway. They'll be handling tech support, so if you find yourself with any audio or visual glitches, please send either one of them a private chat or email at herbwomen at gmail.com. There are other members of our coordinating team here tonight. Uh, it takes a strong village of women to produce these kinds of events and conferences. Please give them a, little, a lot of love and gratitude. And I'm thankful for each and every one of them, particularly becoming a new member of the team. Um, we like to begin all of our community conversations with the reading of our mission, mission and vision statement. And Alicia is gonna do that for us tonight. Take it away, Alicia. Thanks, Sherry. So our mission statement, Midwest Women's Herbal provides herbal education and opportunities for transformation. Immersed in the wise women tradition, grandmothers, mothers, daughters, sisters, and children gather in a co-created village. Through earth-centered healing and nourishment, we ally with the plants that grow around us. From the ground up, we connect to weave ourselves, our families, and our communities into the dynamic spiral of health. And our vision statement, we live in a world where the feminine is honored and respected, where women stand fully in their power, acknowledging their wisdom, skills, and innate healing abilities. Thank you, Alicia. A um, little bit of housekeeping before we begin, everybody. So in the coming days, we'll be sending you some emails with some offers, coupons. We want to make sure that you receive them. So, you know, a lot of times emails can end up in spam and promotion. So a couple of things you can do to uh, avoid that or work around that. You can add herbwomen at gmail.com to your contact list. Um, and after the conversation tonight, when we send you out a, um, a thank you email, you can respond to that and say hello. And that way, you know, then um, the emails um, will know that we're friends now and we'll, the emails will go to your inbox. Uh, please keep all questions and comments in the chat focused on tonight's topic. If you have questions about Midwest Women's Herbal or our work, go ahead and contact us through our email, herbwomen at gmail.com. 
We would like to thank our sponsors who make hosting events like this possible. Moonwise Herbs, Mountain Rose Herbs, Frontier Co-op, Goodland Creative, Peaceful Parlor, Herb Farm, Pacific Botanicals, Host Defense Mushrooms, Great Lakes Herb Fair, Red Earth Herb Gathering, Wisconsin Mycological Society, Wisconsin Public Radio, The Driftless Folk School, DNA Hemp, Wish Garden Herbs, Jade Counseling, and Natural Awakenings Magazine. Sponsorship is open to everyone at any level and helps support the many scholarships we award every year. Check out our website for sponsorship opportunities. All right, and then we have a few quick announcements before we dive in. Did you know Midwest Women's Herbal has a virtual learning space? The Herb Women Classroom has both free and paid offerings with hundreds of hours of learning available about mushrooms, herbs, nourishment, personal growth. Every learning module comes with a monthly live Q&A with Linda Conroy on Zoom. This is a unique opportunity for online learning and amazing chance for you to spend time with Linda and get your questions answered. I'm actually taking the course with Isla Burgess, um, Therapeutic Issues for Women's Health. And I make sure to attend those Q&A sessions with Linda, regardless of if I have questions or not, because other people come with questions. And um, there's been some special conversations that have happened at that, um, that Q&A session once a month. So I highly encourage you, if you've been taking classes and haven't attended those, um, you know, it's, it's well worth my time and I encourage you to do it as well. All right. Individual conference recordings are also available and complete conference packages. So there's something for everybody on that online learning platform. Tonight, we're excited to announce two new modules in the Herb Women classroom. So clinical practices in herbalism, and there's two packages for that. And Women's Mysteries, also two packages for that. And I was scrolling through and looking at some of those topics. And there's some powerful keynotes in there. Um, I don't want to name one person and then not forget anybody else. So even just go explore that herbal classroom and look at those new modules. I think you'll be really impressed. Registration is open for two more weeks for the 2024 In, Your Own, In Our Own Hands Women's Wellness Series. We're thrilled with a lineup of dynamic women teaching this past winter, including Phyllis Light, Robin Klein, Julie Charette Nunn, Dr. Cornelia Cho, Sherry Winston, Bevan Klein, and of course, our very own Linda Conroy. In Our Own Hands began on January 20th, and we recently wrapped that up on April 13th. Uh, so this is your last chance to sign up at the current rate. You'll get all the recordings that you can watch at your own pace. So that's still available for everybody for the next couple of weeks. Registration for Midwest Women's Herbal Conference May 24th through 26th at Camp Helena Brockman in Almond, Wisconsin is sold out for the main weekend. Thank you everybody for signing up early and that really helps us a lot plan and get everything underway there. We have started a wait list in case space opens up so registration is still open for that. Registration is open for the pre-conference events so that includes Thursday evening, Friday morning, and there are two three-day immersions earlier in the week with Dr. Cornelia Cho and Susan Weed. There's also a two-day herbal first aid immersion with um, Linda Conroy and Leah Wolf. You can simply create your own mini retreat coming earlier in the week. And that includes lodging and meal meals. And this year, a really special thing at the conference is there's going to be a sauna available. So that will be a true retreat atmosphere. And then you can also pre-purchase recording packages at a great price for the main conference. And registration will be put in the chat by our tech team. At the end of tonight's conversation, we'll be giving away two course modules in the Herb Women classroom and a full recording of the May conference. You need to be present here tonight to win any of these, to win these amazing giveaways. So be sure to stay to the end. <sighs> All right. At this time, I'd like to introduce Barbara Batondo. Barbara designs knowledge solutions, specializing in accelerating knowledge transfer through innovative learning programs and interactive knowledge sharing events for global groups. She's also an ur urban herbalist. A longtime student of Linda Conroy, Barbara played an active role in Midwest women's herbal activities for the first decade. In fact, she led the opening ceremony at the first conference. How cool is that? 
She was a core team member for multiple years, a retreat facilitator, and offered a variety of workshops, including an herbal spa. And I'd just like to share a few personal things. When I started attending the conference, Barbara was there, of course, and I attended her uh, calendula workshop. So she spent an entire year with calendula. And then... Um, Let's see. I remember also um, the, the the thing that resonated with me that was in your bio right there, Barbara, is also the um, urban herbalist. And I know you, I seem to remember you were in an apartment in New York City and telling people that, yeah, you can still practice herbalism in the concrete jungle. So um, welcome, Barbara, tonight to the community conversations. Thank you. Thank you, Shari. Um, it's my turn and great privilege to introduce my partner tonight, Linda Conroy. Linda, it's a great um, a great pleasure to share screens with you. And although many people on the call know you, um, I just would like to say in my own words that you are a visionary. Um, the woman who founded Midwest Women's Herbal Conference, Mycelium Mysteries Women's Mushroom Conference, In Our Own Hands Women's Wellness Series, and the um, the Herb Women Classroom. And that's just half of it. You also run the Dynamic Moonwives Herbs that offers in-person and virtual herbal apprenticeship programs. And um, as a bioregional regenerative herbalist, you um, have been cultivating a relationship with the plants uh, for over 30 years. And in this process, practicing and teaching herbalism in the wise woman tradition. Um, as somebody who has been my teacher, my mentor, and who I consider a dear friend, it truly is an honor to be here with you tonight. And um, I'm very looking forward to this conversation, which I know is going to go in a lot of different directions, but it's going to be about community and about knowledge and learning and communing with the plants and gathering their information um, and applying it in uh, holistic and wise women ways, and also maintaining a critical, a critical mind and an open mind. So with that, I um, celebrate our time together with Linda and celebrate Linda herself. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> I'm super excited to be here with you as well. And super grateful that all of you are here and the um, community. I see lots of people that I know. I see some people I don't know personally, but maybe I know you and peripherally. And then I see a lot of our team members here, which is super exciting to me because this is truly an opportunity for a community conversation and to talk about village herbalism and how do we create community in this, these um, dynamic times. Uh, working with uh, knowledge and community and connections and um, yeah it's just really um, so dynamic and I'm so glad to be here with you Barbara. Well let's just start off with this concept of community um, and let's get the community involved so um, everybody who's on the call I would really love if you could share in the chat words that come to your minds or to your hearts when you think about Midwest women's herbal, the community in general. Um, if you've attended an event, what was the community experience that you had? And if you haven't attended any of the Midwest women's herbal events, um, when the word community comes up, what resonates for you? What are some words that you associate with it? Oh, I see sisterhood, belonging, connection, uh, welcome to those who are experiencing the Midwest women's herbal community for the first time, um, learning from each other, uh, connection, sisterhood, a theme is appearing there with that. Um, Linda, for those of you who don't know, I'm just going to let the chat keep going. Um, you have been very intentional, um, for the 20 years that I've known you about the community that you keep. Um, and the container you create and hold with your team for Midwest Women's Herbal. And I'd like to, as you watch the words coming up, hear from you yourself about your intentions and your perspective. Um, what matters most to you, Linda? 
about the communities that you've created and this one in particular that you've co-created with with the women? So one of the words that comes to my mind that people hear me talk about a lot are containers. And we step into containers together. And I always say a container has a beginning, middle, and end. And you will see that in this evening's activities, <laughs> that we have a beginning, middle, and end. And that holds us. And so when we gather in community, especially to learn and stretch and, and expand our horizons, it's really important that we're held in that and that there's a place for us to explore and it's almost like I think of it as a learning lab a lot of times, <laughs> you know, we're in this space and we create a container that holds us and that gives us that space to learn and grow. And so that is my um, intention. Every space I go into, whether I'm teaching a small class or I'm walking into the Midwest Women's Herbal Conference with 400 people, or we're coming online here to be together so that we all feel held and seen and cared for. And we have the opportunity to stretch and be um, my definition of health, which you know that I've borrowed from Isla Burgess, who is um, one of our elders in the um, in the herbal community, she talks about being flexible, adaptable, and resilient. So there's also that piece that the container helps us to be able to be flexible, adaptable, and resilient. Linda, you didn't mention the community that you keep with the plants, which I know is um, first and foremost, uh, and we'll get to it a little bit more, but when you think of the knowledge and learning in the community at Midwest Women's Herbal and the knowledge and learning transfer that goes on in your plant community, what similarities do you see between the two? Well, it's absolutely guided by the plants. And actually, so I'm gonna invite everybody on the call to do this. If you close your eyes for a moment and breathe. And as you're breathing, I want you to acknowledge that every breath you've ever taken since the day you were born, the day you arrived on this planet, is connected to the plants. And that every breath you ever will take until the day you die is connected to the plants. So our constant ally, our most consistent companions throughout our whole entire lifetime are the plants. So they are, I see them as my allies, my companions, my guides. I mean, plants have directed me sometimes to do things and to take action and to, and fungi as well, mushrooms, because of course I started the Mycelium Mysteries Mushroom Conference because there were so many mushrooms in the woods one fall when we were on, on site at the conference site that I just thought, we need a mushroom conference. And they were like, yay, yes, please. <laughs> And so that's going into its eighth year. So yes, thank you. I think because we're here together as people and we're talking about community and um, that was my focus as, as I started out. But absolutely, the plants are, are right there beside us all along. And they feature in the mission and vision statements, um, and which is important for me. I mean, I remember when these statements didn't exist, and then I remember reading them for the first time, and I remember feeling very uh, soothed and grounded knowing that we're, we're about connecting with plants. That was the line that really stood out for me more than any other. Um, and I'm not sure if the tech team dropped the mission and vision statements in the chat, but if they didn't, it would be a great time now. I would love to invite the people on the call, the women on the call to um, add the lines, just echo the lines or the concepts that matter most to you. I mean, for me, it's the plant world and you know, our relationship with the plants is as one of the ideas. The other is, you know, women and coming together to learn together and share. Um, but I would love to hear more. Thank you, Sherry. Tradition is one. Cycle, cyclical patterns, feminine, honored. Thank you. I won't read them all, um, but it's wonderful to see some familiar names, transformation, immersion, 
Um, and especially if you're new, please don't hesitate to um, chime in and share what resonates with you. Transformation is another theme. Linda, um, as the words come in, the words and phrases um, come in from the audience, I would love to um, just talk about what having a mission and vision statement has have what having these statements have done for the conference from your perspective, from the leadership side, but also from um, just the, the conference and the other um, activities around the conference. First, I want to echo what you said that there were a couple of years when the, where there weren't wasn't a vision and mission. And so we were developing the conference and it was happening and we were all so excited to be together to be with the plants. We um, chose a plant ally and we still do every year. There's a plant ally chosen um, to um, be our guide for the weekend. And so the couple of years that we didn't have a vision and mission, it definitely was, well, those were those young beginning years. And then a couple of years in, a, a few of us on the organizing team said, we really need a vision and mission. And my background, my academic background is in social work and social work management and law and social policy. And I was always taught with nonprofit organizations that you create a vision and mission. And so I agreed with the other women that we really needed to create a vision and mission. So we went into retreat for about four days and brainstormed. And just like we're doing here on the in the chat, we threw ideas up on a board and we wrote them and until they became something. So they became sentences. <laughs> and then they just spiraled into something that we felt really held us. And during that time, nourishment is such a big part of the work that I do in the wise woman tradition. It's a big part of the Midwest Women's Herbal Conference. We really prioritize being nourished when we're together. And so during that retreat, when we were creating the vision and mission, a woman cooked for us the whole weekend. So we didn't have to, all we focused on were the words and the mission and the vision and dreaming and walking. And we were on a farm and we went outside and we were the plants and we listened to each other, to the plants, to the earth. And we came up with that vision and mission. And once that was formulated, it really helped guide us to make decisions about what we wanted to do, um, what kind of um, workshops we wanted to offer, who we wanted to bring into the space to share, what type of, type of activities we wanted to offer. And so it really started to form something that we could turn to as a question, does this fit into our vision and mission? Because if you don't have a vision and mission, you uh, lots of times you, you're not sure what your baseline is and you're not sure where you're going. Or if you're not, if you're unsure about if something fits it with your organization, it's hard if you don't have a vision and mission. Does that answer your question? <laughs> it does, it does. And I, I mean, I think everybody, who comes to the conference or who's attracted to one of the other events or different platforms finds herself in one or both of them. And there's something there that is attractive. It's something that we want to contribute to. We want to take, be part of. And then also both of them help, you know, for myself, I'll just speak for myself, you know, travel to the Midwest Women's Herbal Conference once or twice a year for 10 years was expensive for me, you know, air travel, cars. And yeah. I had to keep in mind what it was that I was investing in. And the mission and vision statements really helped me from the decision points around finances, for example. Um, another thing that you know, as you know, I've done service for the conference and I've taught at the conference and I've attended and, you know, all the things. And when it came to, you know, doing service as a volunteer, you know, there are sometimes complicated decisions and discussions. It's not, you know, sometimes there's disagreement and, you know, we can all agree on the mission and vision statement. And so we can, we can meet there and then makes, you know, deeper understanding by listening and other things. The other thing that 
both of the documents helped me to do is when I was putting together talks for the conference or picking a topic, you know, just going through each of those documents, does my talk on calendula and making makeup align with parts of this? Like, is it, does it align with teaching and learning? Does it align with the, you know, connecting with the plants? Is it in support of mother, you know, made in crone, you know, does it go through the life cycle? So it's a very dynamic, both of the documents are dynamic and they've also changed over the years. They are not, um, you know, set in stone. They're definitely changing. Can you talk a little bit about um, how changes have happened? Like what, what leads to a change in one of these documents? Well, I do want to mention something from the vision and mission before I answer that question that is super meaningful to me, is that we're weaving ourselves and our communities back into the dynamic spiral of health. And this is super important to me because my hope is that women leave and then they seed their own communities and they seed their own families and they and that that's woven into it so it's not just the women that are there and it's not just women it's our families and our communities and our connections and so it has an influence it reverberates even beyond the time that we're together in whether and whether it's an online event i mean we you know developed online events in response to the um, pandemic <laughs> and so and we're continuing to hold them because they do contribute to that um, reverberation and it offers people, women, um, the opportunity to participate who may not be able to be with us in person at certain times. So I wanted to um, speak to that because that's a very um, important component that's near and dear to my heart. And I think we all learned during the pandemic that you can have a very robust community at a distance. You can have it in like with the, in your, in our own hands, but you can also have it in a video library and, you know, the herb woman classroom, because, you know, these, just like the plants are very dynamic and um, energetic, the talks and the video programming and the engagement online is very dynamic. And, you know. It really is. And one thing that surprised me, because being the person who likes to be out in my garden and in my greenhouse and in the fields and the forest the most, when we were started doing um, activities and offer learn offering learning opportunities online, I was hesitant. Honestly, I, I was not, it wasn't like, yes. <laughs> and so I was a little hesitant, but I didn't want to lose the connections. I didn't want to lose the momentum. And so we, we proceeded. And one of the things that's been amazing to me is to receive emails and messages and have conversations with women who said that by learning online, they were able to go out into the fields and the forest and identify, um, you know, mushrooms and plants and that they were learning not just online, but they were learning things that they could take out. They could go outside and it was applicable and the relationships with the plants were being developed even through this channel. So that just, you know, really warmed my heart because that's what I always hope for. <laughs> well, I will share this story. I don't know if I've ever told you this. I mean, you know that. So for those of you who don't know, Linda and I have known each other a long time and we met not at an herbal event at all. We met at another kind of conference that had nothing to do with plants. I was not on an herbal path. I was on a knowledge and transcendent path, which I, I still am. I was interested in uh, a different kind of knowledge transfer that this conference was about. Anyway, I happened to be at a table with Linda on the first day of the conference and her salad looked different from mine. And I was like, you know, did she bring her own salad? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> So I asked her, you know, where'd you get that? I didn't see that, that salad on this, on the, you know, buffet. And she's like, oh, I harvested it. And I took me a, you know, a little while to catch on. Anyway, the long and the short was I never went back to that conference. I decided I wanted to learn more about the plants after Linda took me harvesting and so on at that same conference. And I went home and I Googled Linda and I ordered one of her herbal boxes 
a herbal training in a box and it, you know, there was salve and I don't know, some infusion and then maybe a poultice or something It all, you know, you had to make it in this box. And I'm telling you, I had the same experience, you know, just by making a couple salads with Linda at a conference and then getting a book and doing some exercises in a box and reading Susan Weed's book together with these exercises, I was able to begin to nourish myself. And it really did set me on a path. And I didn't have to be in the same place as Linda. You know, I could do this at a distance, even before video. But That's let's... Because that was go, 20 years ago. 20 but years ago. I know. Sure, because I had forgotten about that. And, you know, I wasn't thinking. I mean, we were doing, um, you know, distance learning just differently than is happening now. Because, of course, we have this whole, you know, escalation of the internet now. But um, back then, yeah, it was in a box. <laughs> It was in a box. There were some supplies and dried herbs and a couple books. I think there was, I think the heaviest thing in the box were a couple books and I still own the books and I still make salves and I still drink uh, infusions. So, you know, and much more, much more. And I think part of, at least for me and Linda, maybe for you too, having the mission and vision statement, which I associate with the conference, but bringing it home reminds me too why I like to eat three dandelions a day or why I like to have some encounter with the wild on a regular basis and seek it out because I'm you know weaving this connection and bringing what I know to my community do you want to share a little bit with the community well, how <laughs> I just want to add on to that is that, and you're doing it in an urban environment, which, you know, as Shari pointed out, you're in Washington, D.C., and, you you know, it's very urban. And so you're finding, still finding that opportunity to create those connections wherever you are. And I think that's really important, too, because, you know, we can transfer that knowledge, even though I'm on a piece of land here in Wisconsin, <laughs> the knowledge transfer is still still can happen. Yes. I mean, it took me a long time to eat wild dandelions in the city with where there are more dogs than people. Um, but, you know, I forge ahead and, you know, I got myself in the middle of a bee, swarm of bees the other day. So, I mean, I, it's pretty wild here. It just doesn't look as as, you know rough terrain but um i don't want to leave the topic of mission and vision until we can talk a little bit about the spiral so you talked about the spiral of health but what about i see a spiral between a mission and vision statement that brings a group of coordinators together around a shared vision for the conference they can hold the conference the container for the conference as a group and then through the process of understanding each other better, there's a trust that's built and there's a care that comes into it. I mean, I saw this myself as a member of the committee um, for many years. And then this spirals out into the community, but then it spirals back. Is, um, is there anything that you can add to, to that concept to flesh it out a little bit? I don't think I explained really well what I'm talking about. First of all, the spiral is a symbol of the wise woman tradition, and it's a universal symbol in nature. So the spiral is continually moving, and we're continually moving around the spiral, and we are always seeing things from different vantage points. So when I share about the spiral, I say to people, you know, it's not like, you know, in other traditions, like the scientific tradition has a real straight line, you know, you go from A to B to C. And then in the what Susan Weed calls the heroic tradition, you're good or you're bad. You're either in the circle, you're good, you're outside the circle, you're bad. If you have a spiral, you're always in the spiral of health. No matter what's happening, you're always seeing things from a different vantage point. And so there's not a lot of um, time to get bogged down in things like um, shame and blame. <laughs> it's more like just continual spiral and delight like right now we're coming around into the spring spiral and we're just seeing here anyway we're just seeing dandelions starting to bloom 
And it's like, oh, you know, I've seen dandelions bloom every year since I was, you know, I, I have a picture of myself when I was an infant, <laughs> you know, a toddler with, with a dandelion. I've seen them bloom my whole entire life, but I'm always delighted and I always see it from a different vantage point. And so the spiral is really dynamic. And it holds all of us when we come back together to the conference every year, every, you know, we see each other again and we're so, you know, connected and we are, you know, in our meetings for our coordinating team, we come back together. And so the spiral is continual. We're moving around it. We see it, see things from different vantage points, our lives, you know, from year to year with the conference, things happen to us, our lives change. And here we are again, and we get to be together again, and we get to be with each other or and or the plants. So does that get to what you're wondering about? Yeah. I mean, I, I certainly saw, I see that as, you know, watching the dynamics. Um, I've also seen um, spirals at the level of the leadership team. And you do something very interesting that maybe some people on the call are not familiar with that I would like to talk about, which is a concept that was very new to me when I became involved in the conference, which is this shared leadership. Shared leadership is something that probably no one on the call has ever seen um, as a community structure. So you might need to explain it a little bit. What is it? But then also, how does the mission and vision statement and this spiral relate to that? Right. So shared leadership is something we've been playing with um, the whole entire time the conference has been, in, has been in existence. And shared leadership is not something that's common in our society and culture. There's usually one person who's in charge and they make all the decisions. <laughs> and um, and that's how our, our organizations are structured. So given the, um, the spiral, given different, um, like one, model also we have utilized to look at the organizational structure is permaculture as well. And so we're utilizing the spiral, we're using permaculture principles. And that means that we're actually looking at having shared leadership, lots of redundancy. Everyone on the team knows what's happening at any given time so we can step in and take leadership as needed. Decision-making is shared. I mean, I tend to um, certainly appear to be the leader and I continually am encouraging the women on the team to um, share leadership, to make decisions together, to give input, even if it doesn't match what I think. Um, also asking, um, we take turns facilitating our meetings and taking leadership in the meetings so that when we're on site as well, that we can just take leadership and be the leader in the community as it, as needed. So there, we've visited this, we've had retreats. I know you've actually led a couple of retreats for us where we explored something called the Seven Rivers of healing and brought that in as a model. And the seven rivers of healing looks at where do you want to make decisions that flow? Where do you want to make decisions? Where are you resistant to making decisions and looking at how your decision-making process happens. So shared leadership is something that um, we're not used to. A lot of times uh, women will defer to me as the leader and I'll ask them to um, offer their input and invite them to give their input. And there are times, I mean, this is kind of a silly example, but I think I've shared it with you before, Barbara. And, you know, I we, we, have you know different lifestyles you and I very different yes daily lives and you know yet our friendship is you know just keeps deepening and and so I remember when you proposed a makeup making workshop <laughs> you were going to make natural makeup and I said to my cohort when we were looking you know choosing workshops for the conference I said oh my gosh a makeup workshop like so I personally don't wear makeup <laughs> I haven't worn makeup in a long time, you know, because my lifestyle just, it just isn't something that occurs to me. So um, my cohort said to me, Linda, my teenage girls would love that workshop. That is going to be an amazing workshop. And I said, okay, let's just do it. Fine. So we offered the workshop and on site when the workshop's happening, I'm walking by and it's packed with people. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I just thought so much for my ideas, you know, like we have to bring in new and fresh ideas and we have to be open to ideas that we might, it might not be um, the, what, what we're interested in, but you know, there's lots of different interests in our community. And so offering things that I may not be necessarily passionate about, as long as it's aligned with the natural world, it's aligned with our mission, which certainly the natural makeup is absolutely aligned with our mission. It just wasn't aligned with my lifestyle. <laughs> well, I mean, and this is part of what I think we're talking about when we talk about not only shared leadership, but also a container that is big enough for all of us. You know, everybody comes with their own experience and their interests. I mean, absolutely, my relationship with the plants is much more based in either whether or not I can eat it and how to cook it, or can I make paints and dyes and do textile arts with it? I know more about plant identification from those two areas. You know, I'm not one of these people who, you know, spends a lot of time in the woods and I'm not foraging. You know, I go to the farmer's market and I have relationships with my farmers. That is how I do it. But, you know, there's a place for me at the conference, just like there's a place for somebody who never comes into the city and never wears heels and certainly doesn't wear makeup made out of charcoal. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, and there is a place. And, And that's why we have to have everyone's voice there to give input. And again, if there's disagreement, we can look, does this fit into our mission and vision? And if it doesn't, then maybe we'll make different decisions. But if it does, then we have something to point to and it's not just one person making decisions. You know, there've been, that is one example of many examples where people have said to me, hey, I think we should do it this way. Or, um, you know, we have a new member of our team who I've been meeting with and she said something to me, well, do you all want this to happen? And I said, well, you're very involved in this. I think you should be part of the decision making. (laughs) And so offering that back, I think two women are so not used to giving inputs, not used to speaking up, not used to that kind of shared leadership invitation that sometimes people don't trust it either, don't trust that their voice is going to be heard. And so I, you know, I do make every effort. And then as other team members see that it's truly welcome, they'll encourage other the other team members to speak up too. <laughs> and that's so important because, you know, as times are changing and things are dynamic, people bring in so many different things and we want to hear all of the voices and then consider what we want to do. Well, this is a skill, you know, being able to be in shared leadership is a skill that the part- everyone participating has to grow in. I mean, it's not natural. It's different from most organizations. And so it's definitely, there's learning in the doing of it, in the volunteering. And I can speak for myself as somebody who volunteered at the conference. I got as much, if not more than what I gave in knowledge about the plants and communications, but also in new ways of communicating, using uh, different approaches for um, engaging around disagreement. Um, Also, um, being much more um, trusting of my own voice, and then also trusting of the other women who I might not know very well, or live far away from. And so there's definitely a learning involved. And I think that now's a really good time to talk specifically about your involvement in knowledge acquisition and transfer and the skill building that you've been involved in for so many, three decades at least, maybe before that. Um, And I'd love to hear what you've observed in the community over the 10 and 12 years that you've been involved in Midwest Women's Herbal, specifically around knowledge and learning. Right. Well, I do. I want to say a couple things, and and I'll try to keep this brief because it's it's it could be my life story, but I won't tell my life story entirely. But I am academically trained as a social worker, and I studied social work, social worker management, law, and social policy, and so I came into my herbal path through my social work path, 
And so in the social work realm, I was, you know, looking at um, cooperation, at community building. I was, a, you know, I was a grassroots social worker. I didn't never did corporate large scale social work. I always worked for grassroots organizations where we were constantly community building. And then to, to like layer over that, then I studied permaculture and then I studied nonviolent communication. And I've always been passionate about women's health and women's well being. And so that's been a big part of my work, even when I was in the social work realm. And so all of those things together came together. And I couldn't, for me, starting the Midwest Women's Herbal Conference with other women 13 years ago, I couldn't see any other way but sharing the leadership and sharing the vision and doing it together as a team. That it didn't make sense to me from because of my path to do it any other way. I don't think I answered your question, but I did want to share that. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I definitely... I, I've always sort of understood the breadcrumbs and how they led to this. I mean, you were never just going to be a community herbalist because that is not who you are. You bring people together. You definitely are about sharing knowledge. As long as I've known you, you've been teaching me and teaching people around you and learning. You're a lifelong learner yourself. I mean, you're still in relationship with your herbal teachers from 20 years ago, 30 years ago maybe even before that, which is amazing. And it speaks to this kind of teaching learning community that you've created. Like sometimes you're in the audience, sometimes you're at the front of the room, Linda, you're not always at the front of the room. And you bring in instructors who are new to the conference and people take turns. It's, you know, we see some keynote speakers again and again, and we see new people all the time. Um, and we also see, I'll just, say I've seen your students, not just me, others too, oh. step up oh, hey. and teach and uh, take leader leadership positions in the core team, apprentice with you and get involved in the conference. I mean, this is all, you know, this uh, multi-dimensional learning through, you know, close interaction and proximity. It's a very old way of apprenticeship. It's a very, you know, um, traditional way of transferring tacit knowledge because you can't just tell somebody, you know, you can use dandelions in your salad. You've got to show them, you know, this is when you pick them. This is, if you wait until here, they're going to be bitter. You want to get them from this part of the road, not this other part of the road, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very hands-on experience just like with nonviolent communication, you can give a lecture to your apprentices about it. And I remember that lecture, but then it's through the practice. And I think that this conference is dynamic in that way. And, and your other programs too, the In Our Own Hands and the Classroom, Herb Woman Classroom are also both deep learning and they're capturing knowledge in a, in a very serious and useful way and useful because you can keep going back to them, which I think is really important, especially in an era where people are having different schedules and we don't get together at the same time, even to watch a TV program, much less do anything else. Um, so I, I think that I wanted to say that about your work. What are you noticing in the teaching and learning communities that you're a part of since the pandemic? whether herbal or not. Yeah, because I'm involved in lots of different <laughs> different realms and and you know participating in some trainings myself right now to expand my understanding of um our connections and leadership. And I'm noticing a lot of things. And one thing is which is super exciting is how interested people are in the plant world, you know, in herbal medicine, in foraging, in the natural world. People are really interested. And certainly that was happening before the pandemic, but then it spiked with the pandemic. <laughs> and, you know, people really looking to herbs to for health and healing. And so that's exciting. One of the things I see is a lot of people being distracted because there's so much information. It's just information overload. And some of it is, um, 
you know, peripheral. Some of it doesn't encourage um, critical thinking. One of the things that I think the internet um, robs us of a lot of times are critical thinking skills. <laughs> and that's something that I really see a lot of times when we get together and, and we're sharing about herbs, the teachers that we're bringing in are often thinking through things and teaching us how to think through, not telling us what herb to utilize, and this is something I do as well, but how to think through our relationship with the herb, how we want to incorporate it. We just saw that last weekend in our in our own hands um, session with herbalist Bev and Claire. She's traveled all over the world and she said, in the United States, we worry too much about how to use an herb. In other parts of the world, they're like, however you have it, just, you know, you want a tea, you utilize a tea, you want to eat it, eat it, you know, like they don't worry so much about that. And so in this country, I think we get very, um, like, um, you know, narrow in our focus and instead of broader. And so go outside, even if you're learning online, go out, like we said, you know, these programs can encourage you go outside be with the plants, connect with them. And the programs that we're offering definitely invite that. And that's something that um, I'm excited about people wanting to be outside. And I think we do need to challenge and stretch ourselves to be able to think things through and not try to find an answer because there really isn't an answer, you know, to health and well-being. The, the answer lies in our relationship, our connections, our journey. I mean, all of this is unfolded from my journey. <laughs> this is just part of my journey. And I'm grateful for all the people who have joined me on the journey and who then are bringing their journey to the table. And then we get to share the journey together. And that is um, really exciting. I think what you're talking about in the critical thinking, it's not an easy one to teach. I mean, there are mm -hmm. critical thinking classes in universities and corporate trainings are often involving critical thinking and even herbal apprenticeships are involve critical thinking. But in the day to day, you know, one of the things that you can do if you're an herbalist and you're eager to grow your ideas is to go someplace like the herb woman classroom where you're going to have teachers and the first video is going to say one thing and the second video is going to say a different thing. And you ask yourself, well, why is that? Oh, well, she's living in Colorado and this other one's living in, uh, you know, Ohio. They're working with plants at different times of the year. Their terrain is different. They're picking them at different times and they have different cultural background that is informed by different choices. So this is a great way that I've observed critical thinking. And another thing is the keynote speakers are all really different at the conference. So if you come year after year, you're going to hear one person share experience about whatever it is. And the next year, it's going to be somebody, it is going to be a topic related to wellness and the spiral of health, because Linda, you're, you and your team are picking out the speakers for that purpose. And there's a theme, which is also very carefully collected and the programs all kind of align that way on purpose. But as a member of the audience, you can think, you know, well, why would why would that person say this? I mean, I've been in in experiences where, you know, Susan Weed talked about GMO. Um, I was at a panel where people all disagreed about. Um, oh, I can't, I can't remember what it was, but I remember it was a dynamic panel of um, all different herbalists from different walks of life. And this is where critical thinking is actually a key component of the conference and it's enriching all of us. And, you know, you trends come and go and plants of the year of, of the moment come and go, but the conference is widening the, the, the vision and thinking more broadly and more um, intentionally about what is it that you need or want and which plants around you can do that in the wise woman tradition. And then also, you know, sometimes you just need to share a, you know, a donut with a friend and get the nourishment through that connection. Right. Sterile dog said it. She, that's right. For people who didn't hear her keynote a couple of years ago, she said, I'd rather you eat a Twinkie. It was actually Twinkie a, Twinkie was a Twinkie with a friend 
at a table than a salad in the car by yourself. And just really talking about that important of, importance of being together and being in community and sharing. Absolutely. And, and breaking away from the good and bad, right and wrong, mm -hmm. um, all or nothing, but a much more holistic, thoughtful, wise approach. And that's what I think of you as really cultivating here at the conference. And um, I will just say as an urban herbalist, uh, critical thinking comes from reading labels. And I learned mm -hmm. how to read labels by listening to people at the conference and you and others, you know, about their choices in food, you know, just because it's got a label on it doesn't mean that that's what's in the container. It's absolutely. Right? <laughs> you know, and natural doesn't always be natural. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Critical yeah, thinking having those, is pretty. Those discussions and the, the, so a lot of times women will say at the conferences that it's those in between spaces where they learn the mo most in the conversations at the tables and, you know, during visiting time. And so there's really, you know, um, deep conversations that we can have and share our ideas and perspectives. And those panels are so wonderful when we've had those because you do get all different opinions. I know we had one where there were, it was a stump, the herbalist panel and people had all different opinions about essential oil extracts <laughs> it was that's what it was yes, yes. Was, i was on that panel that was that was a very um a very interesting panel and some people didn't have a reason like they couldn't reason out why they um, were choosing or not choosing to utilize them and so but some people could just really lay out their perspective and the whys and the hows and you know I think thinking things through I mean I don't know how many times I've heard from people I've tried herbs and they don't work and then you say okay well let's think this through <laughs> where did you get it how did you utilize it well and, you know all these things that we want to be able to think through instead of just, you know, that black and white, they do or don't work. Because certainly herbs are not pills. They are relational in nature. And the whole, again, that whole basis of everything we're doing is relationship building with each other, with the plants, with the earth. Um, it's, it should be regenerative. Um, that's, you know, certainly a word I used to use the word sustainable and really shifted my language because I think regenerative is so much more dynamic and it's moving and it's um it 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 feeds and builds on itself rather than it being you know like a, a fixed idea well I want to make a pitch right now about the herb woman classroom because I'm also in the class that Shari mentioned um Isla Burgess's class and I know that you're having a, a raffle for um, access to that program and one of the things that is so cool about this particular way of learning is, at least in the class that I'm in, there are videos from past events, but there are also live conversations on Zoom. And so I was at some of the lectures, so I'm watching some of the videos that I remember hearing in person. And then there are also videos that I didn't attend or see live, so I'm getting new information. And then I get the opportunity to be part of a Zoom call and send in my question and get clarification. So, I mean, it's herbalists sometimes change their point of view over time and, you know, get new information or uh, learn, you know, the, the situation changes and their perspective changes. And so the Herb Woman um, classroom is one of these places where you can have a historical access and then also real-time access, which I think is very unusual and special feature of this use of technology. And as somebody in the biz, I have a great respect for this particular combination of modalities. Do you want to tell anybody else about the or you know, any other ideas that you have behind the classroom? In the classroom, we took a lot of the videos and recordings and we made them into modules so people could focus on different topics. So that is curated. Actually, Maria Fauci has done a lot of work on that. Thank you, Maria, for all the work that you've done there um, putting those together. I mean, it takes a production. 
one of the things is that um i it took me a long time to own this because i never thought of myself as a producer but we produce and curate these things we put them together so the learning pat it's a package so that that it will build on itself and that um folks who participate can learn um and that it 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 really contributes it's not just a work uh, a recording here and a recording there and a recording there we put topics together the other thing and you know we, we were calling this a community conversation on uh, community and village herbalism so i do want to say a couple things about village herbalism because um when we think about the village herbalist uh, you know of the past we can think about that, you know, how does a, a modern herbalist in this day and age situate themselves as a village herbalist? And the classroom is a place to be, you know, where we can situate ourselves as village herbalists. We honor and highlight some of our elders. That's a very important piece for me, Isla Burgess and Patricia Armstrong, um, who are in their 70s and 80s. Um, some of our other elders, Susan Weed, these elders, you know, we want to hear their voices as well as the new and the young voices that are coming in and put them together so that we have a rich, um, you know, broad spectrum of voices that we're hearing. And then we can take that in and sort that out for ourselves. Yeah. And curation is key. And as anybody who's ever gone to a bad class knows that if the information doesn't line up, you can't follow it. And so instead of just ordering videos and not really organizing them or know which one, which one to watch and how they relate to each other, the herb woman classroom has done that already and, um, you know, cleaned up the production so that it's, you know, just the heart of the matter. It's, it's really, I can't say enough good things about it. I'm a big fan. Thank you. Well, it, we're sort of at nine o'clock, Linda, and we kind of covered everything that I hoped that we'd get to tonight. Um, is there anything that you think we forgot that you'd like to touch on? I don't think um, there's anything we forgot, but I really want to um, say this to people, uh, all the women here together. And I know um, my friend Roger's here. Hi, Roger. He, he may be the only. <laughs> and I do want to remind everybody that woe man has man in it. So um, we're, we're not um, excluding men um, in, in our conversation. Um, we may like to be together as women and gather, and that's an important thing, but, um, man is in the word woman. Um, what I want to say is that our journey following our heart, this is something that is really important as far as herbalism is a science and it's an art. And if we just make it into a science or a marketplace, um, endeavor, and we don't follow the journey piece, it's not going to be creative anymore. And that's one of the things you asked me earlier, one of the things I'm seeing. And one of the things I'm seeing is people um, going into this and trying to make it a career. And while I think, you know, of course, I've made my living as an herbalist, but not on purpose. I'll tell you that that was not my, my plan by any means. I just followed my heart. And when I was a little child, I used to run backyard fairs um, for to raise money for nonprofit organizations. <laughs> and so I think I followed my heart. I'm running, you know, events with, you know, um, workshops and learning. And this is something I was doing when I was a little child. And it brings me a lot of joy. And so follow your heart. Don't only... Cool. Linda, you might have frozen. Did I freeze? No, you're going. Keep going. Okay. Follow your heart. Keep going. Follow your heart. Be creative. Don't make it into something that is um that is stagnant. You want to follow your heart. Make it fun. Have fun. Shari, um, this is Shari. I'm so grateful of Shari's first opportunity to be our hostess tonight. And we were talking earlier today, and I said, don't forget to have fun. <laughs> and she actually showed me a sticky note she wrote it down have fun I hope you don't mind sharing me sharing this because I think it's so important for us to enjoy this 
our, our health is something that's dynamic, flex, flexible, and resilient. And we can have fun with this. We don't want to make it into something that um, becomes, you know, rule bound or that doesn't have the, the dynamic um, elements to it. So I, I really wanted to say that um, because you don't know where it'll take you if you really follow your heart. Yeah. And that also who you are before you come to the conference and who you are when you leave have a big part of the same person. And so mm -hmm. you're not coming for, you're coming for transformation, but you're not coming to be somebody else. I mean, I, I studied with you because I wanted to know my garden as well as I knew what's in a Seven Eleven. you know, like I felt that was important for me. I didn't want to do clinical herbalism. I've studied, you know, your process and Isla's process for my interest and for critical thinking, but I want to just be somebody who nourish, nourishes her family and is a better shopper in the market and who makes her own stuff, you know, when I want to. And when I, when it matters to me, when I can't purvey, you know, get something that is quality, like I buy soaps from you because I don't want to make soap but I want to do other things. So that's for me, that's what being an herbalist is and continuing my education is critical because that's who I am as a person, but also, you know, sharing what I learn is deepens my learning. So it's definitely a spiral for me. And I want to say that, you know, you joined the team when we first started the conference and from your um, work life, you brought ideas in, organizational ideas that helped us be structured. And we still utilize your tools today. <laughs> and, you know, we have the running order, this playbook that Barbara brought to us. And so I want to say, too, whatever you bring from whatever else you did before you started your herbal path, you can bring that in and add it to the herbal um, pool. And then that be, makes it more dynamic. I told you, you know, I have a social work background, law and social policy. Barbara has this organizational learning um, <laughs> environment that she's created at her job that she brought into the conference when we were starting this. So it's very, it's a bit, it was a very creative process. It wasn't just, oh, let's start a conference and, you know, we're going to bring herbalists together, which was part of it. But then there was this whole creativity that came. What do you, what do you know? What do you do? How do you do it? What do you think? And two of the other women who came were moms and they said to us, we have to have a kid's camp because some moms won't be able to come if we don't. And so we've always had a kid's camp. So whatever it is that you're putting into the pool, this is going to make a dynamic um, community and make our world just a much more wonderful place. Yes. And we will continue to be lifelong learners and commune with the plants who are our greatest teachers. Yes. All right. Well, I think we're finished. I think we um, should hand it over to Shari, who's going to do some giveaways of our classroom learning opportunities. Thank you so much, Barbara. It's always such a delight to be with you. And very oh, often you're... We don't often get a chance to speak and you're freezing up again. So thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks to Shari for opening and closing. Shari, over to you. Thank you, ladies. Um, thanks, Barbara. Thanks, Linda. I don't know about you all. I'm a note taker and I have about four pages of notes here. And one of the things that I really enjoyed, and I know that one of your focuses, um, Barbara, was about knowledge transfer. And I really appreciate how you captured um, the apprenticeship as far as it's a tr traditional way of transferring knowledge. So um, I really, um, that was one of my takeaways um, from the, um, the event tonight. So I appreciate that. Thank you everybody for attending tonight. We appreciate your time, attention and participation. Let's give some goodies away. So for the winners tonight, please email your full name to herbwomen at gmail.com so we can contact you. We're switching this up a little bit. I think in the past we were having people put their um, information in the chat. 
So we're going to have you send an email to herbwomen at gmail.com. So the first thing we're going to give away are clinical practices and herbalism. And I'm going to go with uh, Karen Kelly. So Karen, please send um, your full name to herbwomen at gmail.com for clinical practices and herbalism. And the next one, these are the two modules from the Herb Women classroom that we were talking about earlier. And the next one is Women's Mysteries. And let's go ahead and give that to Adia. Uh, Adia, I do not see a last name. It's A-A-D-Y-A. So that one is for you. That's the Women's Mysteries. Please send an email to herbwomen at gmail.com. The last giveaway we have tonight is for the Spring Herbal Conference full recording package. So let's see here. Who's that going to go to? Why don't we go with Deb S. Deb S, please go ahead and send your name to herbwomen at gmail.com uh, for that Spring Herbal Conference full recording package. So congratulations to you all. Um, Thank you. Just to let everybody... <laughs> yeah, um, you're welcome. Past community conversations like this one are archived on the Herb Women Classroom and stay tuned to our newsletter and social media platforms for uh, future conversations. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone for attending tonight's event, especially Barbara and Linda, for a really powerful and thought-provoking conversation. We look forward to seeing you at future Midwest Women Herbal events, and we're going to send you a newsletter in a couple of days with um, um, a, a little follow-up and some coupon codes there. So, all right, everybody, that's it for tonight. I'm really happy to be your hostess for the evening. It was my honor to have Linda and Barbara um, share this uh, conversation with you all. So thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody.